In this beginner's Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to create custom sequences and presets for all of the popular resolutions and frame rates. As you know, presets can make life much easier when you start your next project because you can quickly just select the preset you want, one click, it's done, then you can start your editing. So let's dive into Premiere Pro and I'll show you the custom presets that I use. All right, so with Premiere Pro open, let's go up to File, New, and then select New Sequence. Then the New Sequence panel window will open up and you'll see that we have many different presets that come with Premiere Pro. So at the very bottom, you'll see that there is a custom folder. Now, in order to get this custom folder, you need to use one of the existing presets that come with Premiere Pro. And then from within the Settings tab, that's where you can change the settings for whichever preset you choose. And from there, you can save your own custom preset that matches the source footage that you are working with. I'm sure for new editors, when they're just starting out in Premiere Pro, they pick one of these default presets, and that's totally fine, it will work. However, I always recommend to create your own presets, that way you know exactly what you're working with, and you also understand the reasons for the settings. Because ultimately, that will make you a better editor over time. So let's go to the top into the Airy folder and we'll select the 1080p folder and then in here we'll choose the 23.976 preset and then we'll go to the settings tab. Here in the settings tab this is where you can change all of the settings such as the time base, the resolution, the pixel aspect ratio, sample rate and the preview format. Now there are many different options in the editing mode up here, however I prefer to use the custom option and that way I can customize it the way I want down below. Next for the time base, this is where we select our frame rate. So if you have footage filmed at 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second, 25, or in our case 23.976, that's what you'd want to select because you always want to match the frame rate with your source footage. The exception to that being if you filmed in slow motion. If you did film in slow motion, you want to make sure that your sequence is set up to what your frame rate will be when you finally export the video. Next, in the video section, we have our frame size. This is our resolution. So right now we have it set up as 1920 horizontal by 1080 vertical. This is known as 1080p or full HD. And you can enter the frame size for the footage you're working with. Typically it will be 1080p or 4K, and in the future it may be 6K or 8K. Now for the pixel aspect ratio, this can get a little complicated to explain. So I would always just recommend keeping it as square pixels, which means each pixel is as high as it is wide. And then that way you don't have to worry about the pixel aspect ratio as it will always be square. So then you just focus on the frame size. If you do change the pixel aspect ratio to something other than square, you will have to change the frame size as well to compensate. So for me, as mentioned, I'll keep it to square pixels. Next we have fields. Now this is how the footage is scanned as it's playing. You can set it to lower or upper or to have no fields at all, which is known as a progressive scan. Now pretty much all footage these days will be progressive scanned. However, if you're working with older footage, you might need to change this to upper or lower depending on the footage you're working with, such as if you're using interlaced footage. Next for the display format, we wanna make sure that that matches our time base. That just keeps things in sync for your time code. The next section is audio. In here we have the sample rate and display format. Now for both of these, we'll just keep them at the default, which is 48,000 Hertz and audio samples. Then we have the video preview section. Now I've trained a lot of editors over the last several years, and I've noticed that beginner editors tend to get a little bit confused at this section with the video previews. So I wanna clarify that this section has nothing to do with the export, so it's not going to change anything you do once the final video is encoded and exported. This section is just for previewing video in Premiere Pro and doesn't actually affect the video. So you can choose any preview file format. It doesn't really matter as long as it plays fine when you're editing. Over the years, I've changed this a few times to experiment and I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. So I tend to just use a default, which is iframe only MPEG. If you change the resolution to let's say vertical, as I'll show you in a second, that will mess things up and we'll have to use a different format. But for just standard 1080p, I just keep it at iframe only MPEG. And then make sure the width and height match your video section above, and then that's it. Below that, we have the maximum bit depth and maximum render quality. I rarely turn these on because by the time you export your final video to let's say H.264, it compresses it so much that there is really no point in adding and working with this extra bit depth and render quality. All right, so now you've entered all the settings for your preset. The next thing to do is to simply save it. So click on Save Preset. 
I'll call this one 1080p 23.976. That way I know exactly what preset this is. And then you can go ahead and hit OK. I already have this preset created, so I'm just gonna hit cancel. Now let's go back to the sequence presets and go down to custom. This is where the preset you just created will show up. Now for any new sequence presets that you wanna create, you can use the one you just created to create the new ones. So the next one we'll create is a 1080p vertical sequence. This one can be good for Instagram stories or TikTok. So let's click on the first one we created and then we'll use that to create our next one. And then here we'll change the frame size. This time we will flip it so it'll be 1080 first then 1920 because that's what vertical is. It's just the opposite of what the horizontal version is. So we'll do 1080 for the horizontal and 1920 for the vertical. Now, as I mentioned before, using the iframe only MPEG format won't allow you to use the vertical resolution. So we'll go ahead and choose a different one. So under preview file format, I'll choose QuickTime. And if you don't have the QuickTime one, you can try the GoPro Cineform or the Microsoft AVI. But really, as I mentioned before, as long as you can get the video to show up and the right resolution to work, it should work for you, as these are only previews. So for me, I'll choose QuickTime. And then for the codec, I'll use GoPro Cineform. And then that will allow me to enter the correct width and height for my vertical resolution. We'll hit save preset, give it a name, and make sure we add vertical to the end of it. Hit OK. And as I said, I already have this one, so I'll hit cancel. And then now you'll have vertical and your 1080. Next, we'll create a 4K sequence preset. So again, we'll choose our 1080p 23.976 starting preset. Go to settings. Then for the resolution, we'll change this one to the 4K resolution, which is 3840 by 2160. And again, this won't allow us to go bigger than 1080p, so I'll change the file format to QuickTime. And then for the codec, this time we'll use the DNHR, DNHD codec. Again, it doesn't really matter, so don't worry too much about that. And then just like the other presets we made, make sure the width and the height in the video previews matches the video section above. Now we'll hit save preset. We'll call this one 4K 23.976. And then now we have our 4K 1080 and vertical. Now I've created a few other ones. I've created a vertical 30 frames a second for iPhone footage. And then I've also created one for my DJI drone as well as one for time lapses. Now you only have to create these once and then every new project you create, you can just go to the custom folder, select the one you want and you are good to go. It makes things a lot easier and doing it this way, you understand and know exactly what you're doing every time you start a new project. And now that sequence has been created and if you want to change it after the fact, you can go up to sequence, sequence settings, and then the sequence settings panel window will open up. This one will look similar and here's where you can change the settings to something else if you prefer. All right, so that's it for this video. Presets make a huge difference. It saves a lot of time, especially when you're starting your next project. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we upload, which is every single week. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.